effective communication is critical to deep learning practices. In Module 1, Professor Peter Russoff described how designing learning episodes that use multisensory approaches can help generate optimum cognitive load. In this module, we saw this in practice in Dr. James Cascali's music lesson as the children listened to and repeated rhythm and melody patterns, sang and danced. One of the tasks asked you to reflect on ways you could incorporate multiple sensory experiences in your own learning context. Reflection is another important element of deep learning. Maybe one way of understanding reflection is as a type of internal communication, a dialogue with ourselves that helps us to think about things from different points of view, weigh up pros and cons and reframe ideas in new ways. We saw that yarning circles, reflective journals, role play and project-based teaching are all useful tools for supporting reflective practices. We also considered how questioning can be exploited to greater effect in learning environments. Research tells us that many of us are still falling back into the pattern of asking questions to which both teacher and student already know the answer. The Socratic approach encourages learners to engage with open-ended questions to which there is no right answer and about which there are many different points of view. Age is no barrier to this approach. We saw young children and older teenagers engaging with complex ideas thoughtfully, insightfully and respectfully, and reflecting on their own learning by identifying aspects of their dialogic skills that still need to improve. But as Dr. Rosie Scholes pointed out, it takes time to develop effective questioning techniques. We must not assume that we are already effective. Professor John Hattie's research indicates that many teachers are not aware that they are asking so many known answer questions or occupying the great majority of talk time in the classroom. Getting a colleague or mentor to observe and provide feedback is one simple way of critically examining our own practice. For example, you might ask a colleague to take note of how many different kinds of questions you ask, how many were no an answer, how many promoted dialogic discourse, and how many scaffolded student engagement by helping them to think about things in novel ways. A key part of this skill involves moving flexibly between authoritative discourse, which involves direct and explicit teaching of necessary knowledge and skills, and dialogical discourse, which involves a less hierarchical structure. For dialogical discourse to achieve its aim of developing students' higher order thinking and reasoning skills, teachers need to draw on and weave together a range of talk moves. In addition to outlining an approach to learning discourse called accountable talk, Professor Catherine O'Connor discussed some key talk moves in her interview and, like Dr Rosie Scholl, made clear that mastering these moves takes time and practice and requires us to be patient both with ourselves and our learners, but it is worth it. Emeritus Professor Neil Mercer outlined another linguistic tool that he calls exploratory talk. This approach provides students with strategies for reaching a consensus decision. The process of debating, reasoning, taking up position and counter positions, compromising and so on is an excellent way of stimulating deep thinking about complex and contentious ideas. In this module we have explored different forms of effective non-verbal and verbal communication, how different types of questions can be used to promote deep thinking and learning, the role of both authoritative and dialogic discourse in teaching and learning, and different linguistic tools such as accountable talk and exploratory talk that can be used to promote deep level thinking, reasoning and problem solving. But perhaps most importantly, we have learned that communication is about much more than written or spoken words or the non-verbal transmission of information. Whenever we interact with others, we have the opportunity to connect, nurture trust and respect and encourage creativity, empathy, critical thinking and problem solving. In any context, effective communication skills can support learners at any stage in any field to go beyond the relative safety of known answers and surface level information and into challenging but incredibly valuable deeper learning.